birthday, if it's okay. Yes, please. Yes, yes, Father. Please, Father. please. Yeah, I'll just use the 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 Sunday solemn blessing, if it's okay. All right. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with, your, and with, and your, with your, spirit. your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in his sight. Pour out in abundance upon you the riches of his glory and teach you with the words of truth. May he instruct you in the gospel of salvation and ever endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We just had a wonderful rosary, and um, uh, we are now going to just have one hymn. Uh, and uh, yes, there will be an opening prayer. So maybe Brother Do Rohan, Rohan will lead us in opening prayer. And then we have our mighty warrior brother, Don Lobo. He is going to lead us in the talk tonight. And what, what blessings we have, what a gift for the body of Christ. And Brother Rohan, uh, if you would just like to lead us in the opening prayer, and then we'll have one hymn and um, the word of God, and then we'll go through the divine mercy. Yep. Dear God, thanks for your amazing power and work in our lives. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessing over us. Yes, Jesus. Thank you for your great love and care. As we gather today to pray, hold our hand, God. Yes, Jesus. Lead the way. Yes, Jesus. Help us to be good every day. Yes, Lord. Let us know what's wrong and right oh. and keep us safe day and night. Yes, Lord. Let us know your plan, God. Yes, Jesus. Lead the way. Hold our hand. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Hey. Amen. Amen. Wow, Brother Amen. Rohan and his wife, Sister Celia, and their wonderful son join us all the way from Victoria, Melbourne. So thank you, Brother Rohan. What a presence of God and instrument you are. You know, as we pray for all the nations, all the cities. Let us go in spontaneous praises of God Almighty, the Holy Trinity's intimate life with all heaven as we go into our first worship hymn in spirit. So enter into the spirit realm where to tonight nothing is impossible with God. Jesus. Amen. Yes, amen. So as we say, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Holy Spirit, living within me. Praise you, praise you, Hallelujah. Living within me. Praise you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Hosanna in Christ. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, living within me. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. Praise, Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise of Elijah, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Glory to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give now Praise all you, control to Brother Don. So anointed talk that tonight, as we hear, we are so united in spirit. Thank God for the gift of Brother Don. All brothers and sisters. You know, we have been covering Matthew 13 and uh, Luke 8, I think I may be wrong, but Luke 8 probably, where we see Jesus saying, word of God is the seed. The seed is the word of God. And it goes into the fourth category. All of us belong to the fourth category. We are faithful in hearing because Romans 10, 17 says, if you don't have faith, faith can be acquired by listening to the word proclaimed word of, of, of Christ. Amen, Sister Olga. And it becomes hundredfold fruit. We are belong to that category in our goodness of heart. Let us receive. Amen, Brother Don. All, all over to you. Amen. Thank you, Brother. Thank you. I will just share my screen. 
Okay. Okay, uh, brother, you need to enable me to share screen. Yes, yes, sure, brother. The don't have made you now the host. Yes, thanks. Yeah, yes, thanks, brother. Can you put the video? Okay, you're able to see now. Oh, uh, yes, brother. Screen? Yes, brother. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, nice to be back here again talking to you all. And uh, I must say, um, yesterday. I was to prepare for this talk today. And then I had some, uh, some sad news about a friend of mine. So I just want to tell you about him. Uh, his name is Robert Alivio. And uh, last year he was diagnosed with cancer and uh, he's had a tough battle. And uh, a few months ago, I think, you know, before we locked down in Sydney, so that would have been, I think sometime in about May, early May, I went to visit him in uh, Liverpool, my, my wife and myself, because actually he was my wife's colleague. Uh, that's how I got to know him. So he uh, was in Liverpool Hospital in the IC uh, intensive care unit, and we went to visit him uh, early May this year. And his condition was such that uh, he had his body had reacted to the chemotherapy that was being administered to him. And all his muscles, virtually all his muscles had shut down, so he couldn't move. So he was there in this bed in the intensive care unit and uh, he was lying like a corpse, so literally couldn't move anything. He could only move um, a, a few fingers. So when we entered there, he just motioned to the nurse who was there with his fingers. And the nurse said, oh, do you want me to open your eyes for you? Because you see, he had lost control even of his, you know, opening his eyes. So he couldn't swallow food, he couldn't anything. So anyway, so his, yes, the nurse held his eyes open and he looked at us for some time. Then I said, okay, now I said, you relax and then let's pray together. And we said some prayers. And then we, we came back home and, you know, we, we, we talked to him and told him about the great power of God and you know there's nothing impossible to Jesus and we reminded him about the promises of Jesus as well. So thereafter he wrote to me and I've got this writing still here with me and he says I'm just reading from his very same WhatsApp message to me. While at Liverpool Hospital I had numerous dreams which I can remember very clearly. Now these dreams he's talking about was on the night after I visited him. So I know very clearly because the very next morning, his wife rang me and talked to me about him having these dreams. So I, I know for sure it was that particular day, a night rather that he had the dreams. So he's describing his dreams. The first one, the first dream was I was walking with the Lord Jesus Christ on the beach. I saw two sets of footprints. Then later on, I have noticed that there were only one set of footprints in the sand. Then I asked the Lord why there was only one set of footprints. The Lord Jesus Christ said, in your darkest star, that is when I carried you in my arms with me. Now, the surprising thing is, we have heard this story. So, you know, we, I've seen pictures of this and, and these quotes. But the surprising thing is the next morning, which was the Sunday, we had visited him on the Saturday, the sun, sun, Saturday night he had these dreams. On the Sunday morning, he's, talk, he's writing, continuing to write here. The next morning, while the nurse was cleaning me up, now you've got to remember that Robert couldn't move at all. So he couldn't move <clears> his <throat> legs up. He couldn't forget about sitting down or, 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 or moving. He couldn't even move anything on, on the bed. So. The next morning, while the nurse was cleaning me up, I heard her saying, I can't explain why your feet are so dirty. So there was no way that his feet could get dirty except that he had actually had a walk with Jesus. But she, and he's, he's writing here, she is an Indian nurse and I can't remember her name. 
I was unable to open my eyes due to sedation at the time. So that I, I just thought I'd mention that little testimony to you of Robert's intimate experience with Jesus when he called on him to be with him and to help him. And he had said further that Jesus told him, do not worry, I will be with you till the end of time. And, and that was such a big consolation and so wonderful for him. And whenever I spoke to Robert after that on the phone, because of COVID, we're not allowed to visit after that. But he was always cheerful, never talked about his sickness. And sadly, yesterday, his wife called up saying that he passed away. So uh, I do not take that as defeat. That was Jesus who, who spared him a lot, uh, spared Robert a lot of uh, trouble and suffering. But Jesus told him, gave him that assurance that, look, I will be with you to the end. And Robert was very, very sure about that. And so I can rejoice that he's in the arms of Jesus, even though I would grieve at the same time about losing a good friend. And I'm sure uh, a lot of us can relate to this kind of situation. You know, a lot of us have lost loved ones, uh, people who have been dear to us. And, and we know that this life is not all that there is. So we know that this is just a transition. Uh, I think Philippians uh, chapter 3 verse 20 says that we, our citizenship is in heaven. And, and that's why when we say, we remind ourselves the Our Father, when we say the Our Father every time, we say Our Father in heaven, because if our Father's house is in heaven, then we've got to go to our house, which is our Father's house one day. So this is only a, just a temporary journey that we had here on the earth. But I, I just thought I'll, I'll put that testimony in. And, and yes, that did shake me for a while yesterday, getting that news about uh, Robert Olivio. And it was, I was a bit sad yesterday. But, you know, I, I put together this presentation. And I'm sure with um, Father Jesse's blessing that we received and also the wonderful prayer of Brother Rohan that, you know, I'll be able to deliver this talk to you. So today's talk uh, I chose was the incident, or rather the miracle or the sign of Jesus walking on the water. And I've taken it from Matthew 14. So if you want to follow it in your Bibles, you can open up to Matthew chapter 14 and, and have a look. But I've got a part of it here, but it's a good thing because I'm, later on, I will ask you to refer to your Bibles for the rest of uh, the, the chapter. So while we, I'm talking, you can open up to Matthew chapter 14. So if I go down. Oh. So so I'm, I'm going to read this. Immediately, so that I'm starting from verse 22, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Does somebody want to read? Just, just unmute and read. Yes, Brother Don, I think Chris wants to read. So he can. Yes, Chris. Which one? Or anyone uh, who is one? ready. Which one? You can start from the beginning. 22? Chris. Yeah, verse 22. Yeah. Okay. Immediately, Jesus made the disciple get into the boat and go, uh, go ahead of him to the other side. While he, his disciples, he, he, oh yeah, he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray when evening came he was there alone but the boat was already a considerably distance considerably. from land buffeted. buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it uh, du during the short 
Fourth. the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went on out of them walking on the lake. Okay, okay, you can stop there. Stop there, Chris. Thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, thank you, brother. So, so we are just going to, to read this a little slower now. So immediately, so when he says immediately, you got to see about what happens before this. So just before this incident, we see in Matthew chapter 14 about Jesus feeding the 5,000. And we all know that miracle quite well. So immediately after Jesus had fed, uh, the, you know, the, did the multiplication of the five loaves and two fish and feeding the, the crowd with 5,000 men plus women and children. So immediately after that, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Now, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. So you see, Jesus always, it, it was such a tiring day, if, if you remember the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus had been preaching and ministering to the crowds. And then he did that beautiful miracle of feeding of the five, uh, feeding of the 5,000 people. And then nonetheless, after all that, such a heavy schedule that day, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. So it's like, you know, when, when Jesus himself was teaching in Matthew chapter six, you know, if, if you, and, and when you want to pray, he says, lock yourself into, go into a quiet room and pray. So, yeah, so, so it's, it's Jesus seeking the solitude with, with the Lord to, to just to, to talk to his precious father and, and seeking that time with him. Now, later that night, he was there alone. See, it's, there's this emphasis here on Jesus being on the mountainside by himself. And then later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves. So the waves were, were striking them, the, the disciples in the boat, while Jesus was still on the mountainside, praying all by himself. And there was this very strong wind. So now I just want to uh, jog your memory to last week. So if you remember uh, last week, Brother Parry talked to us uh, about, was that the parable of the 10 virgins, uh, Brother Parry? Uh, yes, Brother Don. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so in that parable in Matthew 25, we saw not only just the literal meaning of the passage. So when we read Jesus's word, God's word, we see the literal meaning. But we also come to know there's a spiritual meaning to it as well. And we saw that spiritual meaning, especially with the oil. So when Brother Parry explained about the oil being the Holy Spirit and how we need to seek the Holy Spirit to get that extra, extra amount of oil always. So that's a spiritual insight into the reading of the Word of God. So similarly here... Brother Don, you can mute those yes. from the noise. Yeah. Okay. It's hard for me to okay, that, that's okay, don't worry. So so just as just as there, there was a spiritual insight here too, we are going to come and see there is some spiritual insight into what is being written here? Oh, he went to go confession. So, <clears throat> shortly before dawn, so now you can see that it has been a few hours since the disciples have been in the boat because earlier it said that later that night he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. So right, it had, it, they had been rowing and trying to row for quite a few hours. And now shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. 
So I want to now try and understand the spiritual meaning of Jesus going out to them, walking on the lake. You, uh, earlier in the rosary, we saw that in John chapter 2, when we're talking about uh, in the second decade we saw today, the, the miracle at uh, Jesus' uh, miracle at Cana and St. John puts it in his gospel as a sign. So all miracles were really signs. So we're going to try to see what the sign here is in Jesus walking out to them, walking on the lake. So let's have a look at the next slide. In Revelation 13, 1, it's mentioned, the dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. So I've added that for emphasis. It had 10 horns and seven heads with 10 crowns on its horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. So what it's what is important to observe here is that there was a beast coming out of the sea. So there is some spiritual symbolism about the sea here because we see what was contained in the sea, the beast. So remember that. So let's, let's go to the next slide again. Now this is about the incident where Jesus uh, went over uh, and there was a man who was filled with, with demons and Jesus asked him what his name was and if you remember he said my name is Legion because there were so many evil spirits within him and the evil spirits begged Jesus not to send them out of that region and so then verse 11 says does somebody else want to read Anybody else to want to read? Right, I'll do that. Yes. The large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Okay, thank you, Sister Olga. So you see, you see here that the, the, the evil spirit said, do not send us out of the region. And Jesus saw this large herd of pigs feeding uh, on the nearby hillside. And Jesus ended up, he said, he ended up giving them permission and the impure spirits came out of that man who was possessed and went into the pigs. And the whole herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. So what went into the lake? The evil spirits, okay? The evil spirits went into the lake. So let, let's have a look at the next slide. What does um, Micah 7 verse 19 say? You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. So here again, what's it saying about the sea and the waters and the sea and the lakes? It's full of iniquities. Iniquities. Yeah. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. So let's, let's just go back. To this was shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. So, what is Matthew trying to tell us there? What is the sign there? Okay. Maybe the sign it's a there. Vehicle. That's right. That's right. So, the lake is similar. Now, now, I'm not saying that there are demons literally in the lake or in the sea. Okay, what we're talking about is spiritual symbolism. It only symbolizes spiritually what's in the lake and the, and the waters in the sea. He's saying there are the evil spirits, the powers of darkness in the waters. 
So when Jesus is walking on the lake, what's he doing? He's crushing the powers of darkness. So that is what we need to understand. So the gospel is telling us here that Jesus saw them in the, and the waves and the wind against their boat. And then he walked on the lake. He walked on the powers of darkness, crushing them under his feet. Okay. So there is a, another verse. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, so you've seen those. Now, Catechism of Catholic Church also, uh, uh, paragraph 1220 says, if water springing up from the earth symbolizes life, the water of the sea is a symbol of death and so can represent the mystery of the cross. So this was in relation to baptism, but you see there is a reference here even in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So it's beautiful that we have this, this beautiful image here uh, of Jesus walking on the water. Now, there, there, there is further symbolism, spiritual symbolism in the gospel. For, for instance, when you go back to the crossing of the Red Sea, you know, the Israelites are always, they, they symbolized as the chosen ones, right? The Egyptians are, are symbolized as the powers of darkness. And um, the Babylonians, for instance, they were symbolized as the idol worshippers. So when, when, you, when we look at that crossing of the Red Sea as well, you see the Egyptians. So first of all, the Israelites were able to cross the Red Sea. So they overcame the, the, dark, the powers of darkness and they went on to the other side towards the promised land. Whereas the Egyptians, they were actually engulfed in the waters of the Red Sea and, and they all perished. So, and, and that again is symbolism of the powers of darkness in the water. So we have numerous examples of the powers of darkness uh, being symbolized in, in the Bible. Now, Let us read further from chapter 14. So does anyone want to read or do you want me to read? So if no one puts up their hand, I will continue reading. Okay, I will, I will continue reading in that case. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. So these are wonderful words that whenever we are in, uh, you know, we face any anxious moments, those of us who you know, suffering, Jesus is saying right now to those suffering from anxiety or worry, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. And say that right now to yourself, take courage, it is Jesus, I will not be afraid. Take courage, it is Jesus, I will not, I will not be afraid. afraid. And Peter said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. So we, Peter is always portrayed as a very impulsive person. But I would say that he was a man of faith as well, because no one else opened, out, open, opened up their mouth to, to ask Jesus. But, but Peter says, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the wa water, and came towards Jesus. So you see, through the power of Jesus, Peter is also crushing the powers of evil. But 
when he saw the wind, so when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. So the same Peter who said, Lord, you know, if it is you, tell me to come to you. He began to sink and said, Lord, and cried out, Lord, save me. Why do you think this happened? Because Peter suddenly took his eyes off Jesus and his focus was on the waves and the storm. So the lesson here for us to learn is when we are in the midst of a storm, keep your focus on Jesus and you will go to him and he will come to you. But if we are in the midst of a storm and we start focusing on what's happening in the storm, rather than focusing on what Jesus and his promises are, then we are going to sink, just like Peter was starting to do. So in the midst of a storm, always look at Jesus. Repeat the promises to Jesus. As I've said, brothers and sisters, it's very powerful to remember scripture. Isaiah 43, for instance, if you're in the midst of a storm, one of the verses, Isaiah 43 verses uh, one and two, I think it was, so Jesus says, do not be afraid for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you pass, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze for I am the Lord, your God. So, so that's Isaiah 43, one and two. So those are the verses you've got to remember. You've got to memorize these verses, one, any one or two verses that you find useful. Memorize it and keep saying it again and again, especially at the time. See, it's, it's like, uh, you know, somebody who's, uh, who's preparing to go to, for, to a competition. You don't just turn up at the competition and, and try to, 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 you know, to run the race or to lift the heavy uh, the weights or whatever it is. You've got to start training for it and practicing for it before. And so that when the occasion does arise, then you, you just do what you, you've been practicing all along. And it's the same with using your scripture. Please start trying to memorize a few verses of scripture. It isn't hard. If you start with one, just one, one verse of scripture, try and memorize it, try and memorize it, make it meaningful, meditate upon it, memorize it, use it day in, day out, and you will find the power in the word of God. So then, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll read further on. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, Jesus said, why did you doubt? So you see, you only have to say, Lord, save me. And Jesus is ever ready there to reach out his hand. So Jesus might not have been standing next to him, but Jesus is present everywhere, every time for us. All we need to do is say, Jesus, Lord, save me. And Jesus is ready to stretch out his hand and save us and rescue us. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died, died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him saying truly you are the son of god now i find this amazing because well yes the wind dying down immediately jesus absolute command and mastery over the elements because he was god and because of his relationship to the father but but also i find amazing that when they were in the boat they worshipped him worshipped him saying Truly, you are the son of God. Mind you, they have just witnessed 